Hi, I'm Donna Dewberry, the original creator of the One Stroke Painting Technique. And I'm here in Plaid Studio, and I am so thrilled that we have done a whole year of Flowers of the Month. And you have painted each one of those flowers, and you've even painted some bouquets together with me during the year. So that's been really exciting. And you know what has made me so happy is going to Let's Paint with Plaid on the Facebook site and seeing all your beautiful paintings. And I'm thrilled that we're gonna keep doing that all the way through December, which is what we're gonna be painting today. We're gonna be using your kit, your beautiful paints, which are the Folk Art Multi-Surface Paints, and they're luscious and creamy and wonderful. And it's made your painting easier, hasn't it? Well, let me tell you, December's flower is paper white. And paper white means that you want your loved one to stay just the way they are. And what I love about this painting is I love that I got different moods in the background. I wanted you to learn how to get a halo in here and how to put some of the colors coming to just give it a different feel. And I have an urn that's different and it's like a concrete urn. So that was a fun technique to show you. And I created a way for you to paint these little small strokes by loading the brush different than we've been loading the brush. And listen, all flowers are easy if you do one petal at a time. So let's get started painting flowers of the month, December paper whites. Okay, so let's look at this background. I love this painting. I love that it had the glow in the back. Can you see the glow throughout here? And then the mood coming in. I just thought it was really fun because I, when you're thinking about something like this where you want to paint those bright little white flowers, they will just get lost if the background doesn't have some depth to it. So I came in a little bit darker here and in here, but yet I still was able to have a glow here. So I want you to look at this and down here, it's like it's sitting on a ground, doesn't really look like a table. So let's start working with those colors. So I put against the whole back, I, I base coated it with citrus green. So let's start there. All right, so I'm gonna take my sponge because it works really nice for canvas. And this is, if you haven't used this before, this is a man-made sea sponge and it's a lot more durable. So I really like this a lot. All right, so we're gonna pick up I dampened this already and um, I had washed it and so it's just lightly wet. If you put too much water in it at all, then you're gonna have a really a watery mess on here. So I wanna show you first, I'm gonna do the edges, all right, all the way around. And then I'm gonna sit it down and be ready to add this circular motion first. Now we definitely don't have to leave the circular motion you can then come back and smooth it out. All right, so now what I want is I wanna get all of this one color. And I like seeing striated movements in there, that's a good thing. All right, so if you look at this now, what, what we've done is I've come in here with a couple of colors here, mostly throughout here, what you're gonna see is that the blue made, blue and white made this color. I started with blue first and worked it in with the green on the um, citrus green on the sponge and the Prussian blue. All right, so then I slowly added white to the Prussian blue. <laughs> there we go. I'm gonna pick up the Prussian blue. See how I'm working it in? And that's how I came out with, what is that color gonna be? Okay, so see, it gives it a nice color as I move it from the corner. So I'm gonna come here and pounce into the green a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna add just a little bit of white and let's see what that's gonna look like. Okay, more blue. Now, I usually tell you guys not to over pounce, but on here, I'm gonna pounce it till it's muted to not look 
too textured, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna move along and let that set a little bit as I'm bringing some of that blues around the edges. All right, so what I wanna do is leave this glow in here. I came in here a little bit, as you can see. I muted that in the background. Now my container is gonna go right in here. And I was really concerned about having color here that was a little bit dark, um, not too dark so that the stems would show well. And I'm gonna just take the wet edge of the sponge and mute that in here. See where it's just subtle? So <laughs> when I use the scruffy in the sponge, I'm like, do not over pounce. And now I'm really showing you how much I want you to over pounce. All right. I'm gonna go in here again a little bit deeper. Okay. All right, now I'm gonna come a little bit. I, I'm gonna use this just to put down some color, but I am going to use my flat brush, my three-quarter flat, wet it and work this in. Now what I wanna see is if I get the blue with some white and some of my green. So the blue and green will give you, with the citrus green, will give you even some darker colors, all right? Let's add a little bit of white to that mix. And that's kind of going to go behind my urn area there. Okay, let's put a little medium because see it's sticking and not moving. So whenever you fill that, All right. I'll pick up a little bit more blue. And work it in here. The green and the blue down here. So we have citrus green, Prussian blue, touches of white. Okay, so it's a kind of a gray blue down here. And when we put the urn, it does have gray in it. So, all right. So you're going to go all around everywhere that this color is and just make sure that you put it down here too. So you want to finish your piece nicely. And if you wait to the end and go back and do it, sometimes you won't have the same value of color. And it'll look like you just came back and stuck some paint there and go in the same direction of what you were coating the top with. Okay? All right. Now, I'm gonna, I wanna come in here because I worked on this and worked on this till I got a color I liked. So if I take the Prussian blue and some white and keep pouncing so I have a pretty white and light blue glow. See that? I just kept uh, working with it until I got something I liked. I'm not going to worry about the edge till I make sure I have this color I want. So I lost my white, so I'm going to go back and get some more. Now I'm not using that medium in here, I'm just getting the white tones in here. And I did work it in just a little bit to the blue. Now, any time that it looks like it's just sitting on top is when I want to come back in with a little bit of the citrus and work this in if I need that. Okay. See how we got the different shades in here, a little bits of blue in there. So it's like a mist coming down is kind of how I felt. Work that in so it's really pretty. OK, 
Okay? Now I can come and do my edge. And I'm going to let this dry for just a few minutes after I get all these edges. See, this edge really needs to be coated. And wash my hands from this so I have clean hands to start my project. And then we're going to put our urn in there and a little bit of this gray tone I, I put after I did this. Okay, so we have our glow still. We have the blues coming down from light blue to the dark Prussian blue. And we should be all set. All right, so let's take a minute. Let's you get your get caught up with me. And I'm going to blow dry this until it's ready, and we'll be back, caught up together, ready to go. Okay, so what we want to look at now that we've got it all dry and we're ready to go is we're going to see placement. So one little thing I wanted to share with you, and it really helps, is I'm, this is in a frame, so I would normally do it when it's not in a frame, is to take a chalk line down and then check a halfway and a chalk line across halfway. Okay, and you can just eye it. You don't have to measure it, all right? So what that's going to do is help you see where the placement here is. I'm also about four tight fingers from the right side, so I can put a line right there, all right, for that. And then I'm about two fingers up from the bottom, if you look where it's inside the frame, okay? So that's going to be, it only looks like a little bit there, but it's inside the frame there. All right, so look at this, it comes over slightly. So to make this all work really well, I'm gonna come here and kind of do my X here. Does that, can you see that well? And what's gonna happen is you notice that this is the mossing, but the pot really comes down this much. So the pot's gonna go about right here and gonna come over about right here. See how much over? A Little bit here. So it's going to come down like this, and then this is going to come down like this. So four spread fingers, that's about right, see? I'm going to come over just a little bit more. All right, so if this is my base, you can take this and then curve here. Now, what, what's wrong with this picture? When it, what happens if it's straight, it makes it look like it's going to be square at the bottom. And your base could be square, but mine is actually a little curved, and that's going to give you the effect that it's round. And we rounded it as we came in. Now, I just saw that I might have a little bit of a problem, which is as good because it's chalk, because I have it a little bit over to this side. Do you see that? So if this is your center, your center of your pot, your container, it's actually an urn, then that's going to help you know that you do this much on both sides, okay? So I'm going to come here, it's four tight fingers here, and that's the base. All right, so I want three fingers down to be this curve here. And see how much easier it is now that I have a straight line there to show me? how to balance it, okay? So now what I want you to do is if this was in the center right here, you can see about how much is on both sides. See, doesn't that help you? There you go. All right, now I see that I wanted it way out this way, way out this way. All right, because then what happens is I curved this and I scooped it right here. So don't worry about it being a little bit smaller, a little bit bigger than mine. I want you to, just to make it look in proportion like I showed you here. All right, so curved, and you're gonna curve. And if I don't balance it perfect, I hang moss or do something over it, so, um, you don't see that's not quite balanced. Now, I do worry about um, this one doesn't really have anything that hangs over. There's no greenery and vine I can cover except a little bit of mossing that can go out here. All right. So what we're going to do first thing is I'm going to get um, this gray 
color that I need is the white and the licorice. And the blue look like licorice to me. There we are. Here. All right, so I'm going to come right in here, get a little bit of black, and I'm going to do my base here. So I wet my brush first, and then I'm going to take white and add little bits of licorice to it. Okay? Just mix it up. I like a good puddle so that we can get a lot in here. All right? So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to come right here and stroke. And I can shade by floating later, but I'm just going to get my gray tone in here. See the color? Now one little thing is I drew on one of my canvases with one of those erasable crayon pencils or whatever <laughs> and it did not erase well off of my finished piece so be cautious when you do that we're fine with chalk because it can wipe right off okay so you see this now normally what I would do is go ahead and double load it so I have a nice um, already base coated look I mean already double loaded look so it blends shades and highlight in each stroke and I don't have to go back right now see that little bit of paint made all of this container all right so what we want to do is chisel edge right there all right so one thing I did to give it, of course, this is not the look that you see over here. So one way that I did it is I took my scruffy, and this is my small scruffy. Now you have to fluff the scruffy before you use it. So you want to come in here and really fluff this brush, which some people say, you mean wreck it? <laughs> no, I just want it all fluffed out so that it will pounce and give me some effect. So I'm going to use this lighter color and then grab a little bit of the licorice. Now I tell people not to scruffy it till you lose the color, right? That's why I said in the sponging too. But I want you to pounce this and muddle this until you lose almost all the color, all right? Now I'm going to take some white to the edges, and I don't know if you see me do this yet, but I take a wet brush and clean up right while I'm here. I can clean up with a wet brush this edge that I just put there, and wipe it on your paper towel. Clean it up and wipe on your paper towel. Isn't that cool? And it's done. All right, so I am having a lot of darker than I wanted it, so let's see. Okay, so I'm, mo <laughs> I'm moving that out. Well, I'm glad I've got the wet brush right here because I can fix it really easy, okay? Now, what I want to do, see how I took the flat brush and I moved it some, then really I'm pouncing hard. Sometimes I'm tapping it. That's your licorice and your wicker white. All right, let's, so let's go along here. So we want it to get, have the effect of kind of like a concrete urn. And then, if you look at this, I came back and shaded and floated colors. Right up here, I made it a little bit more And then I put a little bit of glow with this wicker white right in this area. I'll put a little bit down in here. 
just because to get that concrete effect, it's not, it's just not a smooth look. Okay. So y'all see that look I'm going after? All right, now I want that to dry, and then what I'm going to show you after I let that dry is how floating makes that turn into something that doesn't look like at all right now. All right, and I try not to be, I'm not very patient because I tell people not to do what I just did, not to go wipe the chalk off, so I'm going to leave it. All right, so now you, be, you saw a few little hints there, and we're going to get lots of shading in afterwards, but let's go to our design itself all right so one thing that's still nice about leaving the chalk because we really don't need the chalk on all of this now but i don't want to get much higher than that with this mossing which we're going to use the scruffy but we're going to take your plants from here but what's let me do that first i want to show you on here that we have these tall blades of grass and then i came down with some color to intensify them on the tips so let's look at this, and we're going to use a 12 flat. It says right here on your worksheet, okay? I want to just move this up for a few minutes so that we can practice. Now, I have put out the colors here for the greenery. So the greenery is going to go in here first, all right? So I have sap green and citrus green. So now what I'm going to do, and I did put a little bit of white. So as I come here to grab these two greens, See, I, I split the brush to go in between in the double loader, and then I work it in. Now, number 12, you can load all with one color and side load a second, but this right here is going to work perfect for us. We're also, oops, oops, oops. All right, let's pick some more of this up since I touched that citrus green. All right, now what's going to happen with these, sometimes we need a medium. Usually not with a 12, but if we're doing a long leaf, we will probably need to pick up some medium, but we're not gonna pick up medium to work on our coated worksheet because this coated worksheet, if you just push it and stroke it, this is like painting, like when we paint on glass. But what I like to make is an eraser before we get started. All right, so you're gonna fold it, which is what I put inside your palette there. And we're going to stroke this to see if we've got the color right before we start. All right, see if we're liking the color. And I'm wetting just the corner of my paint eraser. This paint, remember, it's got like a sealer in it. So it, when it dries, it's hard to come off of anything, which is what we like about it. All right, so. I want you to see if I touch, lean forward. Now, if you could see my little finger here, let me pull it this way so you can see my, my finger pulling it. All right, so I'm gonna touch, lean forward, and then my little finger pulls the brush. So I'm pulling it with my little finger. All right, so on here, I'm gonna lean harder and stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up, and end on the chisel. Push, release, and stand up. All right, so that's what we want to practice. Now, I'd like to show you that we're doing just little stems here. I mean, little bits of grass, and it's just like this. Now, whatever it looks like when you're stroking here is a good example of how much paint you need, guys, on your brush, because whatever it looks like here on the, your worksheet is how it's going to look like on your piece. All right, so let's come in here again. And I'd like you to just come up here and practice right here. So chisel, flat, chisel, chisel, flat, chisel. All right, and whenever we do our stems, we're going to come right at the back side and pull straight down. Push, lift, and I could do a few of those before I put my flowers just for placement. All right, so I'm going to keep this folded so it cleans off your worksheets. All right, now there's some really good examples here to show you like what, how I laid it on the round surfaces or on glass. All right, so I'm going to put this to the side while we do our, the greenery that we want to do on here. All right, so 
I'm going to come back up and get some of the citrus. This is citrus green and sap, right? And I'm going to work it in and I'm going to touch the medium. So you could touch right here, barely, go back and forth and you're ready. All right. So the first thing I did is I had some grass. Now what's going to happen is you're leading with the light color so the dark color shows. If you flip it, you lead with the dark color, the light color shows. So what I tell you to do when you're doing some of these classes and lessons with us is to replay areas of it where we're practicing and learning different techniques of how you make your design happen and watch the strokes as we practice them again and again and it will make you a better artist because you'll go practice those and be able to do it. Now that's just a little bit of grass I put in first. Now I'm going to pick up a touch of white on the citrus green. That's wicker white on the citrus green. And then what we're going to do is we're going to push down, stand up, and turn. We're going to push down, stand up, and turn. Now I can hardly see that one so I can get more of the sap green and restroke. Okay, and then let's do a little one over here. Push down, pressure, stand up, stand up, and curve. All right, so it looks like they're kind of falling down a little bit. And a few of these were, I'm actually on the chisel, this edge of the brush, right on the chisel. And I want some taller, taller greenery, the leaves for this paper white flower. And I can do another one. Now I'm kind of running out of paint. So if I, if I get a teeny bit of medium again, so you saw how many I did before I needed medium again. All right, so I don't want to get too large with, or too wide. This one's pretty wide. All right, so you decide how tall are these. One thing is if you look at this, you'll see I went all the way to here. So I can still, I still have room to go. Now, one thing I did do in your worksheet, just to show you, is I wiped off this brush and I just picked up the sap green and I came here a little bit and colored some of, uh, just on the chisel edge, going the reverse way, colored some tips so that they would show. All right, just from up here. See how that gives it some, a little bit better definition. Now remember, anytime we're doing these paintings, there's a step that you don't have to keep doing. When I come back and say, why don't we float some of this? Why don't we come back and add this dark green, the sap in here? Just remember, you don't have to do that. That's just something that will take it to another step. But if you're just tickled, oh my gosh, I did this much, just be happy with that. I'm gonna come in here and put some bold bottoms in here because these are bold flowers, okay? and I'm gonna put some in different locations. See, this one's kind of in front, and then I have one right here that's kind of back a little bit more. Some in front. See, this one's standing out a little too much. All right, isn't that kind of fun? You push, and you get it rounded, and then you stand up. And there are little bits in here that I did like that. And you might not even notice it, but it does. It is kind of fun in here. All right. So I did a little bit this way and a little bit this way. Come back and get my colors again. Now, when I did this, some of this, I can bring back into the, to the white. All right. Okay. 
Now, when I'm doing the, the flower itself, if you look where this chalk line is, that cluster is going to hit right there. So I'm going to come right in that center of that cluster, and I'm leading. I'm going to lead with the lighter color. So the dark, whatever follows, remember, whatever follows is the predominant color. So if I'm pulling this way, leading with the white or lighter color, then this dark is going to stand out. See that? All right. Now, this cluster over here kind of hangs to the side a little bit. So I'm going to pull here and make the dark come down. I tried to make it really, really, really dark. There we go. Now, some of the little flowers that are in this cluster are going to stand out a little bit more as we go here. Like here's another one over here. It's going to turn and come back down in here. And I do some of those with script liner later. I just want y'all to see where these clusters are. All right. Now, I can take my scruffy brush. Let's see. I want to show you how to dry this brush out. Okay, so the scruffy brush is natural hairs, so we're going to pounce it in the water, okay, and then we're going to squeeze the silver, the ferro part, because we don't want any water in the scruffy brush when we use it, okay? So we're going to come in here, and I'm going to pounce into the edge of the sap green. Just remember, don't go in the middle of a puddle, and I'm going to come right in here and get some more. Now I am doing two different, I'm doing one color now and coming back and added the other color. And I usually have you get both colors at one time. But I was trying to control right in here what I was going to be doing. And I'm going up and down. You see that sums up and sums down. Okay, and then hang some over the side over here. Okay, when you're getting smaller, tip the brush on the edge. All right, so see you pounce it on the edge. This is your baby scruffy. Now I'm going to take off some of that dark green. I'm going to go right here with the dark green on the brush and pounce some citrus green. So the sap green was still on the brush, but I'm going to get citrus green now. All right, more citrus green. I love doing urns and having the moss hang out of them. And to me, they look so nice and realistic. Now, I'm going to go and shade in here and shade around it and even put some more moss down here. I'm going to come in here and get a little bit of the licorice and make it a darker gray. Can you see that? I added a, a little bit of wicker white and licorice. All right, there's some medium. The medium's gonna help me move it. All right, so I can lay this on here if I feel like I have too much. There we go. And then we might wanna go get more actually. So one of the first things I did was come right under here. See already? See how great that separates it and gives it some depth to it. All right, so I'm going to come right around here now. And curve around. So I come off the edge and around. You all see that? And I'm going to take a little bit from there. Actually, I can even come in here and shade this later. Usually, let me share with you though, what I'm going to do usually is take whatever colors in the background and intensify it. So it might be more of a green tone, all right, instead of shading with the gray there. But that looks good too. All right, so I'm going to come in here with more of our blend that I had there. And I'm going to put white on this side and some dark on this side. So you saw me already get 
the container under there shaded. All right, I'm gonna wipe this off and take a little bit more off there because I liked it where you saw the separation. Take a little bit of that off. Okay, now I'm gonna float a little bit of white. So let's get some medium, a little bit of white. All right, just make sure we don't overdo it with medium. Oops, or overdo it with white. Okay, so I keep rushing it on this side till it moves it over, all right? So right in here, I have a little bit of a glow in here. And you could do a little bit of a glow here if we have a glow up there and right here, okay? Now, when the green's all dry, I came in here underneath and made sap green floated underneath there. All right, and right here. Well, I'll try to remember to do that later, okay? Because I don't want to do it with the greens wet. What I do want to do is come in here and add my sap green. Okay, and like some has just fallen off. Get some citrus. Just a little bit. Okay, all right, so there we go. Now, now I can pounce this scruffy in here to clean it, dry it. You see, there's still paint in it. This is the only brush that I pounce. All right. Now, I'm gonna take this off of here so we can see what we've got going here. All right. So I can come back. It looks like I came back a little bit here and there and added a little bit more white. Little bits here and there. Okay. I even have a little bit in here, I think. Okay, let's work with these paper whites. We're gonna get our worksheet. We're gonna put this to the side. I'm gonna take out some chalk there so I can start seeing if I'm getting that look I want. So this is actually a pretty easy project. What I want you to see is that there's tricks to making different things, accomplish different techniques, all right? So one of the things I did with this is I took the gray, I made the gray with licorice and worker white. See this gray tone? So I just grab these two and work them in because I'm gonna, I don't want it too dark, but I have, if you look here, I've got enough depth that it really looks good that way. All right, so I'm gonna wash that brush out because I want to then, as I'm coming in here, we're gonna put a little bit of white right here. Okay. Then as I'm loading this brush, I can keep touching the white. Now we want this to be like a fourth of the brush is white and the three fourths are gray. All right, so I just wanna get this right here. I did more white on here, but I want you to see that in here, we come up and we slide back down. We want to see that gray, but we want to see really good white on the edge because the white wasn't showing up on the guide, so I flipped the colors a little bit. But when we are on our piece, it's got the darker background and it's gonna have no problem. 
So I dip a little bit of white and we're going to build this paper white flower. And we're going to stay more up on the chisel. Look, I'm going to touch, lift, touch, and come back. All right, so as we're going up and back, we're putting white on the outside edge and leaving the gray on the inside. So as you see, we're going to do one, two, three, and we're going to wipe this off. So I'm going to do, these are even bigger than what we're actually going to do. So let's go back to this one. So we're going to pick up, pick up and come back, pick up and come back. All right, you can tell I need more white. All right, now we're gonna get, I can use a smaller brush, like our six, and do these last little petals. So I use the citrus green and white. You see that right there? All right, so what I'm gonna do is come right in here, and I really intensified the white. See the white on the outside edge? And that's what goes right inside this flower, right in front. A little bit of white. There we go. All right, that's what we need. So I want to have more of the um, more white showing on the outside edge, but I want you to be able to see me practice. Okay, so wipe it off, and then we're ready to go. All right, there's a big version, so you see it really good. All right, now let's get our piece, and we'll be ready to add all of our pretty flowers on here. All right, so I'm going to move that up a little bit so that I can get to my colors. Now, what we want to look at is where we want to place these. Now, I have a cluster that's going in in here. So I can just start working on the cluster. All right, so the first one, if this is our stem, I came up a little bit higher here. So what I'm going to do on here is we're going to do one whole cluster together slide up and slide back down. Sometimes it's easier on your canvas to do a stroke than sometimes it is on the worksheet because the worksheet's slippery, <laughs> which is good because I, I get you to practice how it feels to paint on glass, right? All right, now see every time I'm coming around away, I'm getting a little side stroke of white. All right. Now I can also put little pieces that are hanging. So look, if I come out, I get a point and come back. You can see this one doesn't have a point. All right. And so as I'm trying to get this little ball, now this is a little big. So I'm going to scale it down by covering some of it. This one right here, the top one. Just got a little big. Okay. And the great thing about one stroke painting, you can go in and re-stroke anything you're not happy with. Okay, got a little dark on here. Can you see that? I want to wipe this off and go back to my gray over here. I was picking up a little bit too much licorice. Okay, so let's see. We have one, two, three, one, two, three. See, I have a triangle, another triangle. And you can keep working till you have the full cluster and make sure that they're in triangles of design as you're coming around. I'm also going to add a few side views. And then there's one right here. Let's do this one right in the middle.
All right, so the side one, another one. See, this one's this one. But let's do another one coming here. Now, if I did the three back ones, and then I'm going to work in some ones up close. And see, this one I made it so I could still put the center in. All right. So I'm going to go back here again and try to tone this down just a little bit. But remember, guys, that we're going to put the center in here, which is more white. All right. There. All right. So that's the cluster. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you if I pick up more. I've got my um, gray still a little intense. So if I was over here. I'm not going to do a whole nother cluster. I'm going to go do it while you practice a cluster. And then let's come back and see after I've added a few how I'm going to put the center in here. Let's see how I'm just going to, this tone is a little bit better. See, it's a little bit darker, I mean lighter. And I just put more white. And I definitely want this one to be separate than this one. So take a few minutes. This is good practice for you getting to learn these petals because you're doing so many of them. And then when we come back in just a few minutes, we'll have three clusters, guys, before you come back. And then we'll be ready to put the center in them, OK? OK, so I have my three clusters. And I do still see that they're a little dark in the center. But that's what's so great about using the citrus green and working that in. Remember, on the smaller brushes, we can load it with the major color and side strokes. So I'm going to come here and add that little bit of white to the outside edge. All right, so I might put extra there. And then as I'm laying the brush flat so it's ready to go stroke, I'm picking up the little bits of white. All right, so now what's going to happen is we're going to come all into here. I want it to be cleaner than that. So flatten that out. <laughs> here we are. And come out here. Grab some white. There we go. And we're going to do these little teeny petals. Now these, like we practice, go back and practice on your worksheet when you're doing these. If, if you don't remember, because it is a little teeny, with our little teeny number six brush stroke, <laughs> a little teeny five petal flower. Look at that. All right. So what we're going to do is put a little bit of detail inside of this itty bitty flower. All right. So this is like a teeny flower, which is part of the paper white center. And it's kind of, if you look at um, some columbine, has a little bit in the middle of it. And there we go. Um, a couple of other flowers have a little bit like a, a, another flower inside a flower. All right. Now, as you can see, that's covering up some of that gray, giving me a nice limey look for the citrus green. And this wicker white's real strong. So see how pretty those are looking? I'm going to pick up more of that citrus green there and then adding the white. Wicker white on the tips, citrus green in the middle. There we go. All right, so now what we're going to do inside each one of these little centers is that we're going to add a little bit of dark green because what we're going to do is put some yellow. So what happens is that they have these little stems that come out from the middle and but they come out of a, a darker green center. Now some of these look like they already have a darker green in it. All right, so I picked up both colors and I flatten it before I go to my piece, OK? Now, we can't see these. You can see a little bit. 
Now to me, when I put these in the middle, it covers up that darker gray and it makes it look really good to have that crisp white. So you do want it to be some gray tones, but not, I had it a little black on this one you can see here, but as we come back in to do these centers, see how it covers it up real nice? We're almost done. I have two more. Now see how I have some hanging, some laying over to the side. And I have to get fresh white. Every time I move away, you see that I'm getting fresh white. Okay, so actually I have another one down there. I was saying, I didn't know I did. There we go. Last one. Oh, I want this one to show a little bit. Look. Okay. So, there we go. Now, some of these, I want to put a little stem that comes from there. But right now, what we're going to do... I have, I know this is one brush that a lot of you haven't really used, and that's the one script liner. And I use that one script liner for a small detail like what I'm doing now. So I'm picking up the sap green on the thick green, and I'm putting one dot in the middle of each one of these because what's going to happen out of that dot is we're going to put a stem that comes up, and we're going to take and add a little bit of bright moon yellow on the end of that, okay? All right, so you can see this. We're going to, I actually, let's get the moon yellow. All right. So I'm going to have these going different ways. I want you to see up close. We have a little white with the moon yellow in the center. Now look, these are come down. That goes to the side. I have them going different directions, all right, because it depends on how the flower is tilted. And so I rubbed off most of that yellow because I want to put my white in here first. So I'm going to roll it till I get a nice tip on the two script liner. And I'm going to pull this little straight line in different positions, all right? Little straight lines. And if they don't show, that just means go get more paint. And I really want it laid on top. Can you see that? Now we're going to pick up the bright, thick yellow, the moon yellow, and we're going to set moon yellow on each little, looks like a stamen right there in the middle of that flower. Now see how much detail that gives that? I think that really adds to it. Now I'm just going to finish the rest of those that way. These little side guys, let me show you how we're going to come back. All I have to do is dot these with green, dark green, sap green. And then we're going to put the white like stamen sticking out and then the yellow pollen on the end of it. Now, I want to go in here. Two things I'm going to use the dark green for. I'm going to sign my piece, but I'm going to take this dark green and roll it. The sap green is dark and rich. It gets me the detail that I want when I'm looking for extra detail. Like I tried the chisel a few times and it didn't work. So look at this, I'm gonna grab it and pull it down. Now what makes these flowers look so good is some of them, like I'll do this one, but some of them came from here and then back down. See how cool that looks? So you can see it's that type of a movement right here. So I grab the flower and then I pull it down, I don't want it on there. Grab it, pull it down. So, so see how it starts looking really natural? And here I can grab a couple of them. So the key is the inky sap green, grabbing these flower petals and pulling them down or having them 
curve. Look how cool the curve looks on them. And bringing them down into our bouquet right here. Okay, now I'm going to sign with my inky brush. That is a little thick. Let's get a little bit more water. Never, this is what people always think that they can use the floating medium. Never try to make your two script liner inky with floating medium. All right, so I'm just going to sign. I want you all to sign your pieces. And some people like to put their dates too, and that's fine. At least, if you don't do it on the front, be sure to do it on the back. But you need to sign these with pride, because you did it. And that's what's awesome. I'm going to come in here and make a little bit more gray, a little bit of medium. And I did come in here, there's still too much white. OK. Now, this is what people make a mistake. See that? I've got the color across the whole thing. I've got to wash it, not, not dry it on the paper towel, but wash it, and then come in there and get this gray. Now, where I put this is right down here, and intensified it right along there. See how smooth that is? Now, I actually brought it out a little bit more. I'm going to take it off of here with a clean, wet brush. All right, and I just brought it out a little bit more, even like a shadow there. And I can come under here some. Then remember I said, I think oh, I might bring some gray into here. Okay, and I did put some right in here. It's just shadows. All right, that's how I added it there. Now the last, last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come underneath, right underneath here, all the mossing. Now I want you to see as I'm putting this in here, because this totally has to dry before you do this. I want you to see the difference in how much how rich it looks there compared to it's just kind of flat over here. Because as you come along here, remember what I said, if this is totally dry and you try this and you feel like, oh, that does not look good and you want to practice some more, just wipe it off. Okay? And like I got too much on there so I can just wipe some of that off with my brush. There we go. Okay, now I want you to finish yours and send me pictures. Okay, so what did you think about that lesson? I love that we were able to do different moods in our background. What about you? I love that we did a container that was like a concrete effect. And my little trick on how to load to do each little petal and make it easy for you. That's what the whole lessons are about. Having a wonderful experience creating something and me telling you some tips and tricks to make it easy. All right, so the good thing about Folk Art Multi-Surface Paint is that we get to do on all kinds of surfaces. One of my favorite is glass because we don't have the base coat. And then look at this wood plaque. You could put this outside by your door and uh, we have varnish inside the paint, a sealer actually inside the paint which makes it wonderful for indoors or outdoor, and galvanized metal. That's how I started was with uh, tinware, so that was fun for me. Okay, so I am just tickled to share something with you. Next series for next year is already in the makings, so how fun is that? And I'm so thrilled to be sharing something wonderful and new for another whole year. How does that sound? So, Go to Let's Paint with Plaid and on our Facebook site, and that's where you're going to see what's coming up next. So, a little tease. I hope you enjoyed all year long with me, and I'm looking forward to more. <laughs>